In this tutorial, I will cover two fundamental concepts that you really need to know in ASP.NET Web Forms applications, which are postback and view state. These two concepts are really essential to understanding how Web Forms applications work. So before you start to build any web application in ASP.NET, you really need to learn what is postback, what is view state, and more importantly, how these two concepts work together. In this video, I try to simplify these concepts with examples, and I hope these examples will help your understanding better. Alright, let's get started. First, I want to very briefly illustrate what happens behind the scenes when you request an ASP.NET page through your browser. Let's say you want to access the default ASPX page hosted somewhere in the web. At this point, because of the ASPX extension, you may guess that if I type this URL and press enter, an HTTP request will be sent to an ASP.NET web server. However, your browser actually will have no idea whether this request will be sent to an ASP.NET web server or to a static web server that can host only HTML pages. So let me explain this with an analogy. The browser will actually prepare a request letter that has the destination address as well as the sender address on it and will post this letter to the web. Then the browser will wait for a response letter from the server. The browser knows that the response letter will be an HTML output no matter the sender is a dynamic server like ASP.NET web server or a static server. And once received, browser will display this letter, which is actually an HTML output. Let's look into details of how ASP.NET Server process this request and request the response back to the client. ASP.NET Server will go through these seven stages to create the desired output for the user. In this video, I will briefly introduce this and will not cover too much detail. If you prefer to have an in-depth understanding, at the end of this video, I will share some additional resources. So when the request is received in ASP.NET Web Server, first the requested ASP.NET Web Form will be initialized with its web controls. So we have a very simple web form here with a label and two buttons positioned next to each other. The next two events will take place only if this is a postback request. So what is postback request? Postback request is any request to the ASP.NET Server after the first time the page is requested by the browser. For example, after a page is loaded in a browser, the user may click on a button, right? Which will result in a postback request on the server side. Now we are requesting the page the first time. Therefore, this is not a postback request and these two events will not take place. Next, in the load stage, page load method is gonna be executed. Since we have no code in page load, nothing will happen. This raise postback event stage would also take place only if it is a postback request. The server will also skip save view state event, which I will explain later. And in the last stage, render, the ASP.NET web form will be rendered as an HTML output. So at the end, our web server doesn't send any ASP.NET web form. Instead, it renders the ASP.NET web form as an HTML output and send it to the client. The web server does so because it knows that the browser can only understand HTML formatted output. At the end, what you will see in your browser is going to be an HTML page, although in the URL it says default ASPX. Okay, our page is loaded to the browser. Let's click the submit button and see what happens. Clicking the submit button will create a postback request to the server. Postback requests very commonly created by button clicks. However, other controls can also result in postback requests. For example, changing the selected item in a dropdown list or in a checkbox will also cause postback events. So briefly after a page is loaded to the browser, any further requests from that page sent to the server are actually a postback request. First, the web form will be initialized based on its declarative syntax. Nothing will happen in these two stages because the view state and postback data are empty. Soon I will explain why. Then page load event will be fired, which will not change anything 
since we don't have any code inside the page load event. Next, in the raise postback event stage, the click event handler of the button that calls this postback request will be executed. So here the postback event is actually the click event handler of the submit button. And inside this event handler, we have a single line of code that changes the text of the label. So when this click event handler is executed, the text of the label will change to someone click the button. And before the page is rendered as an HTML output, in save view state stage, a hidden form field called underscore view state will be created and the latest state of the label will be stored in this hidden field. You will see very soon why ASP.NET does this. So please pay attention that the HTML output will have this view state HTML field attached. At the end, you will see in your browser that the text of the label has changed. Actually, what happened is you received an updated HTML output from the ASP.NET web server. That is, the ASP.NET web server actually changed the text of the label. The label text wasn't changed by the browser. Also note that the HTML response received from the server has the view state hidden field. Now let's fire another postback event by clicking on this time do nothing button. Please note that this button has no click event handler associated, so it will just result in a postback request with no further changes in our page. When you click the do nothing button, the HTTP request created will have an additional package which is the view state, which as you may remember was received in the previous step from the server along with the HTML output. This view state contains the information that our label has currently the text someone click the button. And once this request is received by the ASP.NET web server, the default ASPX page will be initialized and this time load view state will be executed because this is a postback request and more importantly, the control properties, in our case the text of the label, will be loaded with the information received from the view state. So now we get the original label text back in the server side, someone click the button. Load postback data will do nothing because there is no post data to load. Postback data is stored only for controls that implements iPostback data handler interface, such as text box, checkbox, radio button. These controls implement this interface and their current values would be stored in postback data in state view state. Please pay attention to this. This is an important information that everyone discards. In the page load, nothing will happen again. Also, save view state stage will do nothing because there is no change in the state of the label control. And later, when the page is rendered as HTML output, the existing view state will be attached to the page as a hidden field again. At the end, you will see a slight flickering in your browser and no change. The text of the label control was persisted thanks to view state. We can actually disable view state for web controls. So let's try this for the label and see what happens. Let's go ahead and add the enable view state property for the label and let's set it to false. So this means view state is disabled for the label. Assuming that the page is requested already and displayed in the browser, let's click submit button. The page will be initialized and the following two stages will do nothing since there is no view state and postback data. Page load will do no changes as well. In the raise postback event stage, however, the button text will change to someone click the button. Save view state stage will also do nothing since the view state is disabled for the label. Therefore, the rendered HTML output will have no view state hidden field attached. And you will get this page displayed in the browser, someone click the button. The page run correctly except one little problem. Let's try clicking do nothing button and see what happens. If we go ahead and click on do nothing button, this time our HTTP request will have no view state attached because we disable view state for the label. After the page is initialized, load view state will do nothing because there is no view state. Page load will do nothing as well. 
That is, after it is initialized, the text of the label control has never been changed during this postback request. So it's just stayed as empty so far. And server will render this web form with empty label text as an HTML output. Note that again there will be no view state hidden field attached to the page. At the end, the browser will display the HTML response in which the label text is empty. So what happened here is actually the illustration of the stateless nature of the web. If we disable view state in ASP.NET, the web forms actually turn into stateless pages. Stateless means that in postback request, the state of the web controls in the page will be lost. Like the way we have lost the existing text in the label when we click do nothing button. Let's enable view state again for the label. Let's add one additional line to page load which will change the text of the label to page is loaded. After these changes, when we request this page the first time, the text of the label will change to page is loaded in the load stage. And this new state of the label will be saved in view state. Then the web form will be rendered as HTML and note that this HTML output will have the view state hidden field attached. And at the end, this is what you will see in your browser. So far, everything is working fine. When we click the submit button, a postback HTTP request along with the view state will be sent to the server. And after the form is initialized, the label text will be updated based on the information retrieved from the view state. Later in the load stage, page load will also try to change the label text to page is loaded. Then inside the button click event handler, the text of the label will change to someone click the button. This updated state of the label will be saved into view state and included in the rendered HTML output. At the end, in the browser, we will see that label text has changed to someone click the button, which is what we want. What if at this point we click do nothing button? A postback request including the view state will be sent to the server and after the page is initialized based on the information provided by the view state, the text of the label will change to someone click the button. This is great because the server is able to persist the label's original state. However, later in page load event, the text of the label will be updated back to the page is loaded. At the end, you will get the page is loaded text in the label. However, we expect that when we click do nothing button, the label text shouldn't change and should just stay as someone clicked the button. The problem here is caused by the page load event, which sets the text of the label to pages loaded no matter it is a postback request or not. If inside the page load event we could determine whether this is a postback request or not, then we could actually decide whether to execute or skip this line of code that changes the label text. And fortunately, we can do this with the isPostback property of the page class. isPostback is a boolean type property and it will be true only if a web control, for example button, has caused a postback event. It will be false if the page is requested for the first time by, for example, entering the URL. Now, with this if statement, we allow the execution of this code only if the page is requested for the first time. Now, let's see what happens when we click do nothing button with the updated page load code. We will have the label text set correctly thanks to the view state. Then, we know that page load method will not override the label text because its postback property value of the page class is going to be true and this condition will not be satisfied. And at the end, we will see the original label text preserved. So here are a few updates. Remember, a postback is any request for a page that is not the first request. And a postback will always be in response to a user action. For example, most of the time, a button click. And view state helps ASP.NET overcome the stateless nature of web and its postback property help determine if the page is requested for the first time or instead any postback event occurred in that page. And one warning, large view state may have performance penalties since, as you may see in the examples, 
it travels with the HTML request and response back and forth between the client and the server. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.